These are epiphytic native orchids and they've all been raised by Jerry Walsh on his one hectare property at Landilo, about an hour west of Sydney. I've had temperatures in here ranging from plus 46 all the way down to minus six. And as long as you don't actually get frost settle on their leaves in the winter time, they will take the colder temperatures. There are basically two types of native orchid. Terrestrial ones which need soil to grow, and these epiphytic ones which don't need soil at all. They're quite happy in a tree or on a rock. What is it about these plants that got you hooked? <laughs> well, I suppose it's the infinite variety in plant form. Uh, if you look around here, you can see so many different things that don't even look related, and yet they're all members of the Australian orchid community. For instance, this one here, Dendrobium grimesii, is a very rare natural hybrid. and. Uh, it's got uh, like rat's tails, if you like, and hangs down like a bridal's veil, and they're its two common names. Across here, for instance, you have Dendrobium lichenastrum, lichenastrum meaning moss-like, and little bulbs there, tiny little flowers. Also over here, we have one of the best genuses, genera in Australia, which is Sarcochylus falcatus, and that has a common name of uh, orange blossom orchid, because the flowers are similar. Over here you've got Dendrobium tetragonum, and that must be one of the very few plants in the world that actually has a square stem. You don't see that in very many plants that I know of. And down here we have Bulbophyllum globuliformi, which some say is the smallest flowering orchid in the world. And that only occurs on hoop pines between about uh, the border ranges and uh, somewhere in about central Queensland. If you have a look close in there, you'll see those tiny little green bulbs and there's a tiny hair which represents the leaf. And uh, you've got to be very enthusiastic uh, to try and grow these things. And that's what I am, enthusiastic. Now these would be a couple of your best. This one here is Dendrobium speciosum variety curvicoli and it's restricted to an area up around Mackay in central Queensland. It's known for its foxtail effect of fairly crowded flowers in very thick segments and usually the lovely coloured centre of the labellum or that part in the centre of the flower. This one over here is a very unusual variety called variety black down ants. Now it's restricted to a very small area in the wild and very few people have ever seen it in the wild. What would be your top tips for someone wanting to grow native orchids? I think the best species to start with would be this one here, Dendrobium speciosum, because it's easy to grow, almost maintenance free and doesn't suffer a lot of insect attacks. Also when it comes to light conditions you don't have to have a very deep shaded structure because they like bright light and when you come to feeding them, fertiliser at half strength, fortnightly or every three weeks is probably the best thing you could do. Uh, and if you do that, you won't have any issues very much with speciosum. You don't get as many plants as Jerry unless you know a thing or two about propagation. He's taking divisions from a rock orchid. It's not a subtle process. Next, I would trim off these roots here to stimulate new root growth. You don't have any large rocks or trees to mount this guy on, so what are you going to do as an alternative? Well, that's correct. So now I'm going to put in a, a potting mix that we use from these materials here. I'll use coarse pine bark here, and I'll put it down there about that much. I'll then add about an equivalent volume of medium pine bark, about that much. I also put in a rock substrate which gives it stability and weight so it doesn't tip over in the pot because they're quite tall plants. Stir it around a bit and grab my pot and I'll start off by putting that into the bottom of it, about that much to start with. I'll then pick up the piece and put it there well down into it like that. I'll then get more of this and plonk it around there. And there you have it. It's a beautiful thing. Add the water and we're home and hose. Next, Jerry's board mounting an orchid. 
he takes a division, then mounts it using loosely bound fishing line to keep it in place until the roots attach themselves to the board. One more for the collection. With land clearing and other pressures on wild populations of these fabulous orchids, their numbers are really diminishing in the wild. How do you see your work in relation to that? Well, once again, I think, it's, I think it's conservation by cultivation, and it gives me a great thrill to know that I'm contributing something to the pressures on wild stocks.